All right, this is your brother Aisha Yar coming at you with another lesson. First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Raka Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned his truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Akwath that's listening and learning. Today's video is going to be entitled White Parents Adopting Black Children. Now, I got inspired to do this video because a friend sent me these two videos. Now I'm going to play for you all. And pretty much they're both sh uh, sharing their stories of how it was growing up uh, within a white family. It's black children that were adopted by a white family and they're giving their stories of how everything went while they were growing up. And pretty much <laughs> the stories, of course, aren't good. You know, they speak about how they were abused, how they were um, looked at differently, how they were treated differently from their uh, original children. Because, you know, their original children are white, you know, Edomites. And uh, they pretty much is just giving their story on how they didn't like it uh, living in that. They didn't like living in those households. All right. And a lot of these stories, are, uh, one of these stories are, are really dark. <laughs> OK, I mean, you're going to hear it. But at the end of the day, we all know that we live in Babylon, the great, a.k.a. America. And these are one of the things that this country loves to cover up. They never want to push or speak about the darkness or the wickedness or the evil that goes on within this country. They always want to push uh, racism to the side and they, uh, they definitely want to erase it from history. Just like this one meme that I came across where it said, uh, whenever you uh, hear about uh, black history, you hear about, you know, the slavery and everything like that. But they always call it black history. They never want to call it white history. OK, because if they were to put it like that, there would be like it would uh, give it a whole different perspective. All right. You'll be like these people. You know, from back in the day, the ones that we have to look up to, quote unquote, and get everything from today. This is their history. This is how evil they were. And this is what they did to the so-called black man, so forth and so on. But before I get into speaking and uh, speaking more and everything like that, we're going to go ahead and get right into these two videos so you can see what I'm talking about. So let's get right into it. Get our buzz on. Story time. I was adopted by a wealthy white family, and to say that they were racist is the understatement of the year. And the mother was particularly a problem. She threw the N-word at me on multiple occasions, even told me once to keep my, quote, cotton pick and paws off her stuff. I was forced to keep my hair incredibly short because they didn't like me growing my hair out because it was, quote, unprofessional. Constantly told that people of my race were inferior to them, Coached me on how to be a less threatening large black person. They forced me to work outside on their 10-acre horse farm for 10-plus hours a day during the summertime without pay. Called me a child of Cain when I brought my white girlfriend home for the first time. Said that my soul was tainted and so was my lineage because of the color of my skin. Kept me so malnourished that I didn't hit puberty until college. Tried to force me into sports because that was my race's strong point and discourage anything that had to do with academics. If I showed any sign of disrespect, even the slightest, I was immediately beaten and spent the night in the barn. But you know who didn't get treated like that at all? The white kids they adopted. Not saying this young lady is, but just because you adopt a black child does not automatically make you not racist. I said what I said. <laughs> and that's the first video. And it's funny, you heard him say when he brung home his uh his white girlfriend, they said they compared him to Cain. And see, and that's the thing, man. Esau is a fugitive and a vagabond that the scriptures speak of, man. He loves to run away from his history. He loves to run away from who he actually is, man. Okay, he doesn't want anybody to actually see what type of devil that he is, man. Because we already know when you read the scriptures and you read about Cain and Abel, Cain represents Esau. Abel represents Israel, man. Okay. And Cain and Abel came back as Jacob and Esau in a reincarnation. Okay. So at the end of the day, <laughs> this isn't the, you know, they always like to switch things around. They, they want to say that they're the Jews and we already know that they're not. They want to say that we're Cain and we already know that we're not. Okay. So it is what it is, man, because this is who they are. They don't want people to know who they are. So let's go to the next video, man. Let's scroll over. Now hear what she got to say. Adopted parents. Hey, 
mom, so I'm about to turn 17 and I was wondering if I could start dating. I mean, my sister started dating when she was 17. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think we should just talk to your dad first to see what he says. So, hey, Haley wants to start dating and we let her sister start dating when she was 17. So I think it's only fair that uh, she gets to date. You know, because she's about to turn 17. Nah, I don't want her to start dating. Why not? Yeah, Dad, like, how, that's not fair. Like, why not? Not until I pop her cherry first. Wow. <laughs> wow. And that's another thing that Esau loves to do. Esau loves to take down our women. Okay? It's just popular thing as um going on again uh called ghetto gaggers where it's a lot of black women or whatever they're going into you know the, the porn industry or whatever and they're letting these uh these white men treat them like pretty much as pieces of shit man you know they're over here you know dr uh putting their faces in bowls of water and everything they got the yoke of iron on their necks you know representing collars and everything like that they're spitting on them slapping them around calling them niggers and everything like that, you know, and then that you already know how a lot of these porn scenes end, you know, they always end with the, with the, uh, <laughs> the white protein shot. All right. And it's not just one, you know, it's multiple men doing this to one woman. Okay. And then as we just heard in this video right here, you know, she was adopted and everything like that. And she literally just said that, Hey, the father was like, no, you know, she can't date until I pop her cherry. And this is another thing that Esau likes to push too, man. He likes to push that uh that incest vibe, man. And the thing is, people always want to say, well, you know, that's not blood or anything like that. You know, they're not related, so forth and so on, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, man, this is supposed to be somebody who's supposed to be in your family, right? So you're supposed to treat it like that. But at the end of the day, Esau I'm like, man, look, I'm going to do what I want to do. You know, hey, if he look at a certain woman with lust, he's going to get after her, point blank, period. And that's in the scriptures because it says that uh, a lot of our women was going to be given to other men, many of these other nations. OK, so let's get right into it, man. Let's get right into these scriptures and tie it in with these videos. So let's first let's get the uh, let's get Psalms. We gonna get Psalms 44 and 14. And it says, thou makest us a byword among the heathen, a shaking of the head among the people. And as we all know, when you go into that word byword, it's a cutting and taunting word. OK, you know, you know, we read about bywords pretty much, though, that word goes back to, you know, the words that's used against us. Nigger, spick, wet back, uh, red skin, you know, so forth and so on, man. These words that are used against us to make us feel lower than who we actually are, because we already know that we're Israelites. We are gods, but we are dying like men, like it's saying in the scriptures. OK, so they call this a byword. And that's exactly what the first dude was going going through. You know, he was like, man, they over here telling him that don't put none in your cotton picking hands or none of my things. And you already know the N word slipped out way more than it should have in a household, you know, because it's not the first story. That came out like this. I uh, came across a couple of videos where they were like, man, uh, white families would adopt black children and secretly use them as slaves. You know, they would they would treat them differently. It was actually a video that was shared a few months back uh, where it was a, a, a almost teen, pretty much a teenage black woman. And she was with this white family or whatever. And this lady was making a video go viral because. She was like, look, you can tell that they starving the, the black girl and everybody else is eating. And then as soon as the camera was pointed at the family, everybody, you know, got it in, a, uh, got in defense mode. They got, you know, they got a defense mode. They like, oh, snap. OK, she's starting to expose us. We got to do something about this. This is not the first video. This is not the first story to go around where they will do these type of things, man. OK, so at the end of the day, they look at us like we nothing. That's why it says a shaking of the head among the people. When they look at us, they just be like, man, look at these niggas, man. They don't care about you. They, like I said, they secretly are using a lot of us in slavery still to this day. And a lot of people want to say slavery is over. Slavery is, is not over, man. 
we all of us are still slaves. We just did a video. I just did a video video yesterday. Uh, Lamb backing off Apostle Ramah's video where he was showcasing that we are still slaves under the banking system. OK, we are still slaves. And like I said, a lot of these families out here are still using us for labor. He said it in a video. He said, man, they adopted him. He's supposed to be one of their children, man. He's supposed to be one of their children. They made him go outside during the summertime working 10 hours straight. And he said for no pay, nothing. This made him do it while everybody else is in the crib chilling. This is what they do, man. This is what they do. Now, let's get Genesis 25 and 23. This is Genesis chapter 25, verse 23. And it says, and the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. And two men of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. Now, who's stronger than the other people? Israelites. You Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. He said within the video, they looked at him as if he was inferior. And that's a complete lie, man. Everybody know whatever Jake get his hands on, he is the dominant one. Look at all of your sports, man. When the NBA started in, in the 50s, it was nothing but Esau, right? But as soon as, the, you know, the 60s came and Jake started getting into that, Jake turned it out, man. Jake turned it out, okay? And it's the same way in every sport, every sport. And this is why, you know, Esau was getting nervous because <laughs> Jake was starting to get into hockey, man. That's like their last resort. They're like, damn, man, now you're going to take hockey? <laughs> That's their sport, man. They already know Jake is the superior one, not the inferior one. All right. Let's jump straight to Job 30 and 1. This is Job chapter 30, verse 1. And it says, but now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdain to have set with the dogs of my flock. Who's younger than I? Esau. Now, when you read the scriptures, of course, it says, uh, of course, Esau is the elder. But when you, you got to go into the Hebrew. OK, so let's do that. We're going to go to Job 30 and 1. All right. Go to Job chapter 30, verse 1. And here it is. And it says, and younger than I. Like, well, now, when you go to the definition, it says little insignificant young little insignificant 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 mean young younger youngest so when you read the scriptures speaking about how insignificant esau is to us because they are nothing they are nothing man they're the ones who came from the cage they're the one who used to bray and grunt and everything in the cage man they are nothing they are lower than the earth man they are lower than dirt the most I put them in, in position right now, and they got all this wisdom and this power just for the simple fact that he can punish us for going against the commandments, statutes, and laws. That's it. And they have this pride now, since they are in power, they have this pride where they feel like they can't be touched, man. And this is why Yahweh Shai is going to come back and set them in their place. Okay, let's look up this word insignificant and see what it says. Now go to insignificant. And look what it says, unimportant, <laughs> trifling, <laughs> petty. And don't, don't Jake like to say these words, man? Oh, they trifling, man. Why are you being so petty? That, that's Esau's nature right here, man. Too small to be important. They nothing, man. <laughs> they ain't they nothing. They, man, Esau can't compare to us. We the salt of the earth, man. Of no consequence, influence, or distinction without weight of character. They you without meaning, meaningless. They're nothing, man. They are nothing. Okay, now let's go back to the scriptures. <laughs> that shit said trifling, though. So like you. Hey, that was funny as hell. But um, now when you go to uh, uh, younger, you know. Now we go back to the scripture. Let's read it again. So like it for my laughter. You know, sometimes you know when it's true come out, man. It's it. It brightens your day, man. This is Job 30 and 1. It says, but now they that are younger than I have me in derision. Let's look up that word, too. Let's look up derision. You know, look up derision. It says ridicule, mockery. Woo, let's go to ridicule. Uh, click on it. And it says speech or action intended to cause contemptuous laughter at a person or thing. 
to deride, make fun of. Do they not do that to us, man? If you go into the history, all you got to do is go on YouTube and look up uh, racist cartoons. And you go to those racist cartoons, it'll be nothing but Esau drawing, you know, black people with the big ass lips, eating watermelon and everything like that. And a lot of these cartoons were created, of course, back in the day, way, way back in the day, man. OK, and they still do that to this very day, man. They make fun of us behind the scenes. They have Jake dress up in these uh, ridiculous looking clothes. A lot of our women get their hair dyed, these different colors. The men have these dreadlocks that's blind colored and everything. They got the tattoos all over them, skinny jeans. And they the ones that make Jake push this, man, because when they get into the industry, they tell them, like, look, this is the new hotness. You know, they spit game to them. They influence them. OK, they be like, look, man, I'm telling you, if you do this, you're going to get paid. Everybody going to follow you and you're going to be the man or the woman. And they and then, when they, you know, soon as Jake leave the room, this is what they do. They make fun of you, man. They laugh at you because they know who you are. They know that you're the chosen people of the, uh, the most high, man. And they they got you to the point where they have you looking lower than who you actually are. That's the limitations, man. I believe the fourth chapter, limitations four one. The gold has become dim. You know, so at the end of the day, let's read it one more time. Job 30 and 1, it says, But now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I will have this thing to have set with the dogs of my flock. This is how inferior Esau is to us, man. Job didn't even want um, Esau to be around his dogs, man. And I, and I remember Apostle Tahar did a video a long time ago. And he was like, uh, he, he said he he would walk his dog and everything like that. And, and uh, he'll see the uh, Edomite woman walk up and, you know, you got to, you know, we living under this society. So he like, man, now I got to I got to speak to her and be all polite or whatever. I got to let me let her touch my dog and pet my dog <laughs> and that thing like that. Because you already know how dirty they are, man. Come on, man. Nobody really want to be around them. But that's for the simple fact that of who they are in the position that they have in this life. People got to act accordingly, man. But all of this is about to change, man. All of it is about to change. Let's get Deuteronomy 28. Let's get Deuteronomy 28 and 30. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 30. And it says, Thou shalt be throth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build an house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shall not gather the grapes thereof. So at the end of the day, this is a curse. This is a curse, man. Our women was going to be given to other nations. And this is not how it's supposed to be. Our women are not supposed to be laying with any other nation of men, man. That's it. But since we went against the commandments, statutes, and laws, this is what happened. This is what happened. Okay? So you see videos like that where her, you know, being adopted and everything like that. And they talking about the only way she can go out and date is if the father popped the cherry. Come on, man. What, what type of shit is that, man? Like I said, this incest thing is pushed very heavy, you know, and a lot of our women are ravaged daily, man, daily. It's like I said, with the ghetto gaggers thing that's going around, because the whole big story about that came out when her, her uh, uh, the, uh, what's, I don't know what her name was, but she came out and said and felt confident that she was going to tell everybody that she made $2,000 from a scene from doing that ghetto gaggers bullshit, and then her family found out. And saw the pictures and the scenes and everything like that. And her family disowned her, man. And she felt like she was this shit. She was like, man, you know, a lot of these other women who do this, they'll probably get like 200 I got 2000 You can see how low, you know, a lot of our women have gone, man, to the point where they would literally sell out for $2,000. Do you know that $2,000 could be gone in two days? One day. That's somebody's rent right now, man. And it's not a nice apartment either. This is, this is somebody's rent right now in the hood, $2,000. Gone, one day. This is what you're selling out for, man. But at the end of the day, it's not about that. It's not about that because, like I said, Esau has pushed this independence, this feminism, and everything like that, and Esau has his way with our women, okay? So this is going to be a curse that was going to be put upon our people, and we're living it right now, man. Let's get Psalm 73. This is Psalms chapter 73, and we're going to go to verse 5. And it says, They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they played like other men. Speaking about Esau, therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain. 
violence covered them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully. And this is exactly what they do right now, man. Like I said, when these uh, these so-called black men or black women get adopted into these white families and everything like that, they do these things secretly. And then soon as the truth come out about them or whatever, they act like they never did anything, man. They act like it's not a big deal. Just like they want you to forget slavery. They erasing the history out of the history books so kids can't learn these things. Okay, they switching around the truth. Okay, they speak corrupt. They speak wickedly concerning oppression. They want to switch things around, man. They think like they didn't do anything wrong. And like I said, the pride that they have is about to bring them down, man. It's coming. It's coming. Let's end it with that, man. Let's end it with Revelation 18 and 6. It's Revelation chapter 18, verse 6. And it says, reward her even as she rewarded you. And double unto her, double according to her works. And the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. This is getting ready to happen. Everything that they have done to us in this earth is going to be done to them double, man. And that's, you can't even really think about that. You can't even really think about how, how bad it's about to be for Esau, man. You really can't think about it. We know that the High is going to use us to make sure that his fury is executed correctly in the kingdom of heaven. Because, yes, slavery will be in heaven. Okay. And all we know is we're going to meditate terror. And we know a lot of brothers got ideas of what they're going to do already. <laughs> but the thing is, when we get into those new bodies and we have the, our full minds, man, we're able to think clearly like never before. It, it's going to be something else, man. It's going to be something else. It's going to be for a thousand years, man. And the thing is, those thousand years is not going to go past quick. It's not going to be quick, man. They're going to feel every single day because a brother brought out a good point. I forget what the brother's name was. But he said that thousand years, one of the reasons why it's going to feel like a long time is because when you're constantly in pain, you just want it to go away, man. And I can, uh, you know, uh, relate to that because when I was in a wheelchair a few years back and everything, because I had problems with my lower back or whatever, you know, I had pain that was shooting to my legs. And so I used to always just think, I'm like, man, one of these days it's going to be over. I'm getting tired of this. Every day it seems so long because you got to keep feeling that pain over and over and over again, right? And then, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the most I, you know, uh, healed me and everything like that. And I'm grateful for that. But for Esau, oh, man, this is it's going to feel like it's, it's never going to end. A thousand years of getting your ass whooped from spiritual power guys every day. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. And this is why, you know, the elites are nervous. They are, man. They are because they know that this is their future. This is why they're building the bunkers. This is why they're trying to fly out of space. But at the end of the day, the most high is harder than their heart. So then these prophecies can be fulfilled and they're about to get it, man. They're about to get it. All of the, you know, even two thirds when they come back to when two thirds come back, hey, they're going to know. And two thirds, they're going to probably be even more angry than we are because they're going to come back and they're going to realize what they could have been. If they would have just uh, hearkened to you, how about show me how was shot? But then they're going to realize everything that they had to go through because of what Esau put them through, man. And it's going to be ugly, man. It's going to be ugly. So, yes, they're going to receive double, man. They're going to receive double and it's going to be righteously. So uh, what they call that uh, uh, indignation. OK, that righteous anger. All right. So this is what it's about to be, man. So it's going to be no more. No more. These sob stories going to be coming out in the kingdom of heaven. All right. So I hope this was edifying. So with that, I'm going to say call Halayim, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rekak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth with their truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aqua that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Ratzaza, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala. Keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.